That's me. Mustang rebuild. It's raining outside, so I get to work on the Crown Vic. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Some of you guys don't know. Before I was a fireman and stump grinder, I went to college for uh, auto, automotive, for automotive refinishing. I got a, actually got a college degree in it, okay? That was uh, honestly right about, well, it is 40 years ago, okay? A lot of things have changed, okay? You saw me, I rebuilt that Mustang. I had to learn a few new things by going back to a guy that I used to paint with 40 years ago. But I was a specialty painter and I did Corvettes. Okay, so I knew them inside and out. And so uh, with new technologies, I was one of the first ones in town to use base coat, clear coat. And then I got out of the business. I became a fireman and did spent 30 years in that. And I here and there, way back when, maybe 30 years ago, I did a couple of projects here and there, 56 Chevy and stuff. But now I'm back to, you know, I got my shop together. I'm back to doing something I love. I mean, slowly fading out of stump grinding because, you know, I'm getting older and I want to retire, but I want to have fun still doing what I know how to do. All I had to do was learn some of the new technologies of the paints and what's changed here and there and as far as epoxies, things like that. I painted back originally when it was lacquer, and then we advanced to lacquer with a urethane, urethane top coat over it. We used actually an aircraft urethane. Then they came out with base coat, one which is 1K. Then they came out with, I was the first in town to use 2K, which is base coat, clear coat, okay? And then they came out with the 2K primers. All that was, I faded out. I was gone then, okay? I was one of the first ones to use feather fill on Corvettes. Not the G2, but the original feather fill. And uh, that stuff sanded like a rock, but hey. We used to get our Corvettes perfectly straight. We called it spray-on Bondo. No one else would. Now they do. Now it's spray-on polyester filler, which is a Bondo, okay? Even your Bondos have changed, okay? The Bondos now are, you know, they're lightweight. And, you know, I went to school originally, came, left New York, came all the way out here to learn how to use lead for custom restorations and stuff. And I learned how to use lead. But then they came out with fillers that had aluminum in it, and, and the, they were more flexible and, and faster, and the lead went away, okay? And the lead's kind of toxic to work with, too. Anyway, long story short, today's a review on two different things. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you something, all right? Hold on a minute. All right, for some of you DIY guys or even a guy getting into the business, this is, this is the deal. I've gone around to all my buddies' shops and stuff like that. Everybody uses these Palm DAs. Well, they're random orbitals, okay, because an original DA is right here. And it has a counterweight in there that you can lock in and out. It changes into almost a grinder. If you don't press hard, it locks the disc and you can run it like a grinder, unlock it, and it runs as a dual action, which means just the same thing as that, random orbital. All right? This tool here, believe it or not, is an Ingersoll Rand, very, very heavy, six inch. This tool is actually 40 years old. I bought that tool when I was 19, all right, 19 or 20 when I graduated, and I used it on Corvettes and everything, and that tool is still functioning. Pulled it out today and says, hmm, I don't know if that thing still works. It still works. They built things to last, okay? It's very heavy. All right, here, and this is about a quarter of weight. It's a six inch. It's called a Baxter. It's from Harbor Freight. It's, and uh, I ran the two of them. I like this heavy one. Probably I'll keep this one and use this a lot for running over, first cutting my body work, my Bondo. All right, I'll put 80 on it or whatever I got to do to do the rough cut, okay? We also used to, and I don't have any more. Someone stole it from me. <laughs> It was called a Bondo Hog, which looks like a DA on steroids. It's like, you know, twice the size, and you just ran, it ran slower, and it would cut the Bondo, and then, you know, cut down your sanding time. They still make them. I think there's a few specialty companies, but shoot, mine's long gone. Someone stole it. Anyway, if you're going to be running this from home, you might want an electric DA. 
if you don't have an air compressor big enough. It says you need a 30 gallon plus air compressor to run this in the green, which means good, okay? If you're running, if you got a smaller tank compressor, you're gonna have to shut off and let it catch up. So, if you've got 30 or plus gallon, I think this would be good, all right? And I know a lot of guys use electric ones, but oh, man, now I know why. And then I bought another pad for this that they use, an interface pad, which is what everybody's using now to cut the, the, the clear coat. They run over. I'd never heard of that before. I was like, good Lord, you're DAing the clear coat. But with that pad on it, that other pad, it's like having dual pads. You don't, it doesn't take off stuff. Now, see, this is a regular pad on here. And if you had clear coat on it and you run by the edges, you see I already knocked the edges off. So that's what that other pad is soft for. And you're running really, and listen, I'm going to tell you something else. Okay, back, the highest grits we had, and that was me leaving. Before I got out of the industry, we used to color sand with 600 and buff with heavy compounds. Then they came out with ultra fine, which they still sell. It's somewhere between, I think they say, 800 to 1,000 grit, and it only came in half sheets. Now you got 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 grit. Where was that stuff when we needed? We didn't have it, okay? So I use that stuff on the Mustang, so I'm familiar with it, but I may use a DA to knock the top off of some, the nibs. I'm still a wet sander, okay? Oh, when on my finals, I like to wet sand, squeegee, get every bit. Uh, and you know why I also wet sand? Because I use a block when I wet sand. And I like things to be perfectly straight, all right? As far as the DA, <laughs> I got 120 grit on here. I'm not pressing on it hard. I can see why they use these because it doesn't fatigue you. All right. Now, let me tell you something else before we go further on this. All right. I'm going to sand down this hood. I'm using 120. A lot of guys, you know, if this was nice paint, it'd be DA'd with 320 and stuff. But the car is straight. But you see this color differential? That's the clear coat. Okay, the clear coat got nasty on this. Like you see some cars where clear coat peels off. It was probably a, it looks very thin. Remember, this was a uh, fleet car, police car, okay? But I thought that it was coming off because Ford's had a problem with white, okay? It's not. After DAing down there, I'm finding out that here's the original white. It was primed over. And what these dots on here is what I can best figure out is what we call solvent popping. I think they pushed it too fast and it just, you know, sometimes when you lay too many coats on something and you don't let it flash between coats, that traps the solvent that's trying to get out and it's called solvent popping. It looks like zits all over the place. And you see the clear delaminated off. All right, so let me know that, hey, you know, this was a fleet vehicle and they did what's called a quickie flicky, okay? And I'm bringing it back. So I'm going to DA her down as well as I can. Then I'm using a, it's made by Evercoat. Same people that make feather fill. I think it's called four to one. I'll, I'll, when I get to that stage, I'll show you. It's a polyester primer, high build but it's also a hybrid to where it can be shot over bare metal, okay? Because I know I'm gonna have a lot of bare metal in different places. And I want this car to be straight. And listen, let me tell you another trick from, from old guys. On a show car, anything, I wanna teach you a trick. When you start going to car shows and all, I want you to start learning to be a painter. I want you to look down the sides of cars, okay? And you'll see cars that come out, man, it's shiny, and it looks fantastic, and stuff like that. But if you come down here, I don't know if I can catch the light just right, you'll see little waves. And you'll only see them when the car's wet or real shiny. I need that mirror to some waves. So all your large areas, especially your roofs, your hoods, your trunks, the top area of your fenders down to here, 
when people shoot an eye and walk by, that's what's going to catch them, okay? When they're looking sideways on that car. If you see waves or whatever, that's why they started coming out with really long blocks and a very, very high-end paint job. The car is blocked perfectly straight. So I want you to learn that. So start using your eyes, going around. When you go to, maybe you go to a car lot or whatever. Use car lot. Start looking at some cars and look down the side. Look and see if you see any waves, okay? Anyway, that's a little trick for today. I'm going to show you some old body man tricks too on this. So today I'm concentrating. I'm just going to DA this, DA defender, DA defender. Another thing, don't overwhelm yourself. Like this is a big car, okay? It's a Crown Vic. I'm chopping the car up. Fender, hood, fender. That's it. Door, door. Quarter trunk. Roof one day. That I'll bust it up. I have time in my shop to make it straight. I'm not going to overwhelm myself saying, oh, God, i got to do the whole side. Okay, if I, maybe if I just do only the hood. That way you concentrate and make whatever you're working on perfect. Move on to the next one. Perfect. Move on to the next one. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to use that polyester on top of here after that. It'll be sanded, cut straight. I'm going to put two to three coats of 2K on it. Now it'll be block sand with 400, followed up with a wash of 500 grit. I'll check it, see how straight it is, and go from there. But you'll see the whole process that I'm going through. As far as the review on this DA, I can't remember what they cost, but I'll look it up and put it up there. I think it'll be a good deal. I like it. It's saying it's very flat. And another thing. I bought my sandpaper off of Amazon, one of the cheapest places. Amazon and eBay are some of the cheapest places to get stuff. This sandpaper comes from China. It's 120 grit. They got all different kind of grits. It's lacking a little stickiness in the back to stick on the pad, but I can use some. I put a little spray on adhesive on the back and get that pad being sticky, and we're all fine. So far, it's real good. I think this was only like $15, $16 instead of paying $36. And it's a big roll, okay? Uh, so, you know, you save money by cutting little things here and there. Okay, I'm not a production shop. I'm a guy like you in my shop, okay? Anyway, I'll leave you a question at the end of the video, and we'll see how that goes. Remember, God bless you. Thanksgiving's coming. Probably by the time I air this, will be Thanksgiving will be over. Anyway, be safe, travel with your families, enjoy your families. That's what life's for. We come back to your shop and enjoy yourself out here. I'm going to have the question for a sticker here in just a little bit. See you. Okay, we're back. We cleaned up. Well, somewhat cleaned up. I need to shave. But anyway, before you do anything, hit that like button, okay? It helps me out. And remember, this is uh, the part here. I ask you a question for the sticker. If you haven't done this before, it's open to anyone in the world, okay? The rules will be in the description of the video. You can win. This is the new sticker, okay? It's a design my son did the artwork for. And this is the original sticker. It's the saying I came up. Remember, if you're not learning something new every day, you must be dead. Anyway, if you do win, tell me which one you want, the new or the old one, okay? The old one's the big one, and the new one's the small one. It says Mustang Rebuilder. Anyway, time for the question, okay? Normally, it's a movie question or a car question, but since we're dealing with um, automotive and paints and this DA thing, I decided to do a paint question, okay? It's a lesson in history you need to know, okay? And it's interesting, you know, if you're around a body shop or something or around a man cave, you might throw it out there and see what one of your buddies could answer the question for a beer. Anyway. The question is, who invented the very first spray gun? There's two famous names in the, in the spray gun industry from a long time ago. I want to know, in 1887, that helps you out, who the first guy was that invented the first spray gun for paint. Okay? 1887. Just Google it. You'll find it. Okay? Um... Nothing is, thanks. That's all I got to say is thanks. Hopefully everybody had a great holiday. All of you on YouTube are fantastic to me, and I really appreciate it. You guys send me questions or comments. I try to answer everything, okay? If I don't know, 
or if I've missed you or somehow the other you didn't get a sticker, just email me back and say you didn't get a sticker. Okay, because I'll be honest with you, the postal system now, I'm not supposed to use a word, whatever, but they suck. Okay, if you work for a post office, I'm sorry for saying that, but it's true. They're, I think they're overwhelmed. Okay, between the election and all that stuff that happened. Okay, I mailed something off to Canada. I got it back yesterday. And with some kind of goofy stamp on it from the postal system, yada, yada, whatever, un whatever. So I'm just going to put a couple of stamps on it, rewrite it again, and send it back off to you. See, from, from Canada, Ontario, you know who you are. Don't worry, you're getting it. Okay? I don't want to lose you. You put, took the time and effort to answer a question. Anyway, um, if you got a question about this on the DA, and I know it was a review for it, kind of review. They've changed. They're very lightweight. I know um, this one here, I know Harbor Freight makes cheaper stuff, but it felt solid to me. I know it's made out of plastic, but, you know, for the average guy, I think it'll be fine. Or if you're starting off, I think it'll be just fine for you. Because my old DA that I have in there, is very heavy and it's lasted 30 something years i don't think this one will last 30 something years but um i felt very comfortable using it okay it it was a big relief like on the fenders and stuff i see why they went to a palm rather than that full bigger one that i have okay i used that big one on the hood it did fatigue me my old one and then i finished up with the 180 all the way around the whole hood with that the lighter one and i liked it i just can tell you i liked it all right, and if it does blow out in a year or less, I will make a video and tell you up front the truth. It blew out, okay. But for right now, I'm just telling you I like it, okay. Anyway, like I always say, God bless you. See you on the next one, and thank you once again. Don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps me out. Talk to you soon.